you might have heard about cost-benefit analysis, but it's a bit different if you think about it in a finance world, and it's a bit different if you think about it in process safety. So just an example, you might want to make an investment, or maybe if, uh, I don't know, any of you went to private school, or if any of you are paying tuition fees now, maybe your parents did uh, cost-benefit analysis. They check that this is a tuition fee they have to pay, and this is how much uh, you can gain. This is how much extra you can earn because you are here studying chemical engineering. So that's a financial cost-benefit analysis. You can also think that uh, if there is a cross-section where there are no traffic lights in the city, the government can do a cost-benefit analysis. They can see how much it would cost to the government to install a light in the cross-section. And also, by historical data, they know how much accidents happen, and they can put a number to the injuries, to the lives that uh, are lost. So basically, you can then uh, check and uh, try to balance if it is worth doing the project. So if uh, you think about cost-benefit analysis in process safety, which is, this is from the agency website, cost-benefit analysis, or CBA, it can help a duty holder. I was telling you last time that if you uh, have your chemical plant, you need to uh, see, you need to balance how much you want to spend on safety. No one is expecting you to spend all your fortune and cost-benefit analysis is telling you what this balance is. So it can make a duty holder to make judgments on whether further risk reduction measures are reasonably practicable. So this is exactly what I was talking about last week. And today I will show you how to calculate if it's reasonably practicable to spend X amount of money on improving the safety further. So something is reasonably practicable unless the costs are grossly disproportionate. So to give you an example, so you have the cost. Let's say you need to spend one million pounds on improving the safety, and the benefit is also one million pounds, then it's one. So then it's a neutral. If it's very disproportionate, if uh, your spending is 10 million and your benefit is 1 million, you might not do it, but that's why we have the DF, the disproportionate factor. Depending on the scenario, you might still do it because depending on the risk, this proportion between the cost and the benefit can be different. So to show you exactly, so if you think about this proportion, which is, we call it the DF, the disproportion factor. The greater the risk, the higher the disproportion factor is. So it's normally not set in stone, but we have different disproportion factors for different risks. So if it's a low risk process, if you have low risk uh, to members of public, then the disproportion factor is normally two. If you have uh, risk to workers, then it can be up to three, but if it's a high risk, or major hazard process, like a chemical plant, then the disproportion factor is 10. So normally, in dangerous chemical plants, the disproportion factor is 10. So this will still get the green light. This will still be approved. You can spend 10 times more than the gain benefit. So what is the cost? So on the top, the 10 million, for instance, it can be cost of installation or operation or training your uh, workers or any additional maintenance. So anything you spend to improve uh, the safety, this is the most uh, straightforward cost. But you can also have a cost uh, by the duty holders. So for instance, uh, you can have different uh, types of uh, costs. Uh, that are related. Like uh, the cost can be considered uh, necessary, sufficient for a purpose to reduction the measure, 
and uh, the ongoing production losses as a result, as was measured, they, are, uh, they can be counted also. But uh, the savings as a result of a measure, they are not considered as safety benefits. So your financial savings, they are not considered as uh, safety benefits, they are considered as cost savings because you are saving money. So the costs should be uh, shown only to relate the measure being implemented for the safety. So you shouldn't cheat when you are costing for how much you are spending on implementing the safety. Uh, the problem is that sometimes it's hard to put a number to this. So what is the monetary value of a life? What is the value of a permanent injury? It's a bit uh, hard to tell. So what is on the other side, on the benefit side? So benefits can be normally in process safety, we say about prevented fatality, prevented injury, prevented health issues, or, Dimitri, we are talking about the prevented environmental damage. So, it's really hard to put a number, but uh, this is from the agency website. They have put a number to this. So, fatality is counted as 1.3 million pounds, or double if we are talking about uh, cancer, you can see here. And then, we talk about different types of injuries. So, there are different levels. You can think about permanent injury, serious or major injury, and slight or minor injury. And there are all meaning different things. So permanent injury can mean also that you become handicapped, but it can also mean that you are just out of work because of pain or other things for one to four weeks. That also can count as permanent injury. So if you are uh, not uh, capable of doing your work for a longer time, it counts as permanent injury. Serious injury is uh, count, counted as a slight to moderate pain for two to seven days, and slight is an uh, injury involving minor cuts, for instance, bruises, where uh, it's a quick healing. And uh, you can see that there are different numbers. For instance, permanent injury is counted as 200,000 pounds, by a slight, let's say, a bruise or a small cut, paper cut, for instance, that can happen here, is uh, 300 pounds. So uh, this is how you can put a number, and this is how you can calculate if in process safety the cost makes sense and if it's uh, reasonably practicable to do changes. So I think it's easier if I just give you an example. This is a very old uh, question from an exam. So you can just imagine that uh, there is an accident where a major explosion happens. This is happening because of an overpressure in a vessel, and if this explosion happens, you have 10 people died, 25 permanent injuries, 30 serious injuries, and 100 minor injuries. So uh, this is a very extreme scenario, but if you think about the deep water horizon, you can see that this can happen. But you can also know that this explosion is estimated one in every 200,000 years, or you can just uh, calculate it as 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of uh, minus 5 per year. So when you are doing the calculations in exams, of course, you cannot use uh, uh, this 1 in 200,000. You need to have one number, so you need to convert it into this uh, number that tells you the probability per year. So remember that you always need to do this probability per year. And then the plant lifetime is 25 years. So how do we calculate? So if this explosion can uh, be eliminated, what is the financial benefit that can be gained? So you translate uh, basically what I showed you two slides before. You translate these numbers. You know 10 people's life, how much it is. And that's basically the benefit, the financial benefit, what you prevent. So 10 fatalities, it means 10 times 1.3 million pounds. The plant lifetime is 25 years, so you need to multiply it with 25. And as I told you, this is a 1 in 200,000. Uh, so this is the probability of this happening per year, 0 0.5 times uh, 10 to the power of minus 5. So this is the number 1,671 pounds. 
for the fatalities alone. But you also have permanent injury, major injury, minor injury, and you can, the same way, by knowing how many people, so see 25 permanent injuries, you just uh, put here the number, the 207,000 from the table below, you see, 207,000, and you can calculate also for permanent injuries, and then you just sum this up. So you sum the first with second, the third, and the fourth, and you get the total benefit of 2,400 pounds. So this is the financial benefit you get if uh, you eliminate this risk. It's a very low number because the risk is very low. So of course, if it would happen, let's say, one in every thousand years or one in every 500 years, this number would be much bigger. So this is a very simple calculation. No advanced mathematics is needed. And now you need to decide how much is the reasonable practicable to spend to eliminate this risk. So I told you that the disproportion factor is 10. Anyone can tell me how much is the reasonable practicable to spend on this? It's 10 times this, so you just multiply it with the disproportion factor. So it's reasonably practicable to spend 24,000 pounds on doing this modification. Is this clear? So if we go back, the major explosion happens due to the overpressure. Do you think that 24,000 pounds is enough in real life to make the modifications of such an oil rig to make the overpressure much safer. Let's say you need to find a specialist, you need to get the helicopter to take the specialist there, you need to spend on equipment. So do you think 24,000 pounds is enough to make these changes? You need to get permit to work, you need to uh, fill in a lot of paperwork. It all costs money. So I can tell you that in real life, uh, 24,000 won't be enough to make these changes. So in real life, I would say that uh, if you are on the board that decides whether or not we are making this change, it will be rejected. So it's a proposal that uh, this money needs to be spent, then it will be rejected. Of course, if you have uh, much more money, you can always overrule it, but normally there is a committee who decides whether or not they are doing this change, and. 24,000 pounds is the maximum limit that is reasonably practicable to spend. So probably we won't make this change. But uh, depending on the probability, which is a bit hard to tell because normally we do the probabilities from historical data, but uh, we don't have too much historical data on how often an oil rig explodes. So. There is also a trick I will show you later how we can still get the probability. Basically, you can break it down into smaller accidents that can lead to the main explosion, and then you can count the probability. That will be the topic of next week when we will talk about the fault trees and event trees. We can calculate from smaller parts, smaller errors, small accidents, what's the probability of a larger accident. <coughs> 